Hey everyone, this is Lori with Conversations with Courageous Cancer Warriors. And today we have a really spectacular guest. We have Tracy Wittett, who is a energy healer. She is a spiritual healer. She's really a master at what she does. And she is gonna give us some tips and tricks and all the above in between as to what it means to be an intuitive guide. Tracy, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor, I appreciate it. Yeah, so I'm really excited to have this conversation. As our listeners know, like I am all about everything holistic, everything that there is to be. And you really have done so much work in the energy field. Like, talk to me about that. How did you get started? Hmm. Well, I was originally in Northern Virginia. That's where I was born in DC, raised in Northern Virginia. And in Annandale, Virginia, we, I was like 18, and I would go over to this woman's house on Sunday nights, and she like did reflexology on my feet, and I'm like, oh, this is really cool. And I guess she saw something in me, I'm not sure. But anyway, we studied A Course in Miracles together every Sunday night at her house. Yes. And this was in the early 80s, because I'm a little bit older now. And um, she suggested that I take this Reiki one class. And I'm yeah. like, okay, sure, I'll do it. I don't know what it is, but I trust her and all that. So I took Reiki one. And so that was in 1983. And then I took Reiki two years later. Actually, I took Reiki one and two again, not realizing that I didn't need to, but it's just a natural ability that I guess it got reawakened in me. And then I took Reiki three, which makes you a master, which makes it so that you can teach it. And I taught a couple classes and Reiki is lovely. It's sweet. It's kind. It's, it's rebalancing. And what I noticed through that process is that I share, this is the common denominator through all the energy work modalities that I've taken, is that I share what I hear and I see. And I just thought everybody did that. So it's like a fish in water. You don't know you're in water. You don't know you're intuitive, but then you get proof later. Like, oh, I know exactly who you were describing when you were saying you saw this redheaded man standing over my head or whatever, you know? And I don't know what they mean, but they're, they're like holographic images that come. And I just love that stuff. It's just like I was 18 years old at the pool and I would be reading what your doctor never told you about nutrition. I mean, who does that? I'm just naturally gravitated towards wellness and healing and holistic health. And of course my family thinks I'm nuts. They're like, oh God, look, Tracy, she's into all that stuff again. Why are you into all that stuff? And I, I took this class called creative wellness. Oh my God, it changed my world. Um, it's holistic stress management. So basically creative wellness is all about when you're under stress, what gland is triggered? So there's thyroid, adrenal, and pancreas. And there's personality types that go with each of these glandular defects. So our personality is what? Our genetic code, our lifestyle conditioning, and then our own moral, moral choices. So I found out I was an adrenal type and the natural intuitive. And I'm like, really? A messenger of God? Cool, you know, whatever. So they, you know, I kind of followed the diet. I did all of that because people who are stressed can get physically ill. Mm -hmm. And so like a thyroid type, if you look in your genetic history, sometimes people will find that they had cancer in their grandparents or their parents. Sometimes with the adrenals, we have more of the strokes, the heart attacks, the adrenals are involved with that, right? And then the pancreas types have more of the itises, like diabetes and things mm -hmm. like that. It's just interesting how that systemic body of information called creative wellness brought all that through. So I still implement those holistic tricks and trades ever since I learned it, which was like in the mid eighties. So later, the greatest compliment I ever got <laughs> was from my cousin, Martha, who said, Tracy, you were always into all that stuff. And you know what? You were right. It's like, really? Thank you yes. so much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was like, thank you, because I was just I just kept getting drawn to that. So I've taken access consciousness, which is amazing work, amazing work where you can just clear energies effortlessly without knowing what the story is. Are you familiar with access? I'm not. No. Tell me. Access about consciousness that. is so cool. One of the energy works that you can learn in the very beginning is called bars, B-A-R-S. And it's like limiting bars that we have in our life. So reflexology is for your body, right? Your feet. And it has all the nerve endings that go to everything in your feet. Bars is for your life. 
Mm. So the aging, um, creativity, sexuality, fear, um, control, all of the, there's 32 points on the head and you just hold them gently and you think or say this clearing statement and it goes right over your head, right, wrong, good, bad, pod, poc, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyonds. It's like, what? And it's supposed to because it, it actually goes at the energetic level and clears this stuff out that you don't need. And what's so beautiful about it for me was that I was in a really bad space before I came to access consciousness. I was feeling, well, I was married. I was down here in Albuquerque. I live in Santa Fe now, but I was visiting from Colorado where I lived with my husband then. And we came down here and the creator of creative, creative wellness gave me and he a reading and the whole way home. I swear to God, I don't know what happened, but I cried for seven hours from Albuquerque back to Longmont, Colorado, where we lived. I cannot explain it. And I'm walking along the sidewalk, walking five dogs, which I it was crazy. I had five dogs at the time. And my neighbor said, hey, how you doing? I just learned this thing called access consciousness bars. Can I try it on you? I'm like, Yeah. So I had to wait a week, but when she gave me the session and held those 32 points on my head, I drove away from that session going back home like I had a cool breeze just flowing through my body. I was like, what is this? I need to find out more. Yeah. So I took another course and learned how to do it. And then I started teaching it and it's just, it elevates consciousness. So what better service can we be? to serve ourself, raise our own consciousness, which in turn, since we're all one, raises the consciousness of everything and everyone, right? Yeah. So access is awesome. But then one day I was driving to work. I lived in Longmont, Colorado, and I was driving to Boulder. And I heard on the inner, I guess I'm Claire Audian or something, but I heard call Vicky. And I was at a four-way stop and she was like, her house was like, I'd see it from my car. And I'm like, why do I want to call Vicky? Call Vicky. And so I did, but her outgoing message said, hi, friends, we're camping. If you want an energy clearing session, please call Jean Skyfeather. So I'm like, okay. So I called Jean, made an appointment and got to have an energy clearing that afternoon at her dome. It's like a, uh, an event center. It's small for workshops and stuff at her property. And what I learned was they were teaching a class, multidimensional body balancing. And when I had my first clearing, I realized that they, Jean and Vicki, gave structure to what I did naturally, no matter if it was Reiki, Theta Healing, Ewan Method, Axiotonal, you, you know, it's all one thing and it's all expressions of love, at least to me. And somehow I have the gift to be able to share what I hear and I see, and it does something for the person. It helps. It uplifts them. So I took this course and you had, to, you had to interview to take this course. I'm like, what? Anytime I wanted to take an energy work course, I just sign up, pay my money and take it. But <clears throat> so I'm at the dome and we're in this group interview process, which was unique. And they asked me questions like, well, who are your guides? And I'm like, I don't know. St. Germain, Great White Brotherhood. I don't know. And we were answering all these questions. And I thought, this is so interesting, but really my point is that spirit guided me to do this. Mm -hmm. And whenever I have had an experience on the inner that is weird, and I've had a lot of them, but one time I was at the Unleash the Power Within thing in Denver with Tony mm -hmm. Robbins. And I was kind of grossed out because I was laying on the floor of this convention center where 2,500 people are just because it's public space or whatever. And I saw this blonde haired cameo man in my third eye as we were going through the human technology process before you walk over the hot coals. Mm -hmm. And I kept asking, who is this blonde haired guy? Is it, is it Metatron? Is it Tilios in Mount Shasta? You know, who is this? And I'm standing in line at this group interview to go to the restroom and on the wall were two pictures of these ascended masters and one of them was a blonde haired guy. I'm like, oh my God, who are these people? Who are these, you know, masters? And she said, well, that's Gopal Das, D-A-S. And I'm like, okay, well, long story short, Gopal Das taught Vicky this work. So this ah. is an ascended master from Egypt 5,000 years ago that came to me on the inner 
And then somehow I'm told to call her. I go to the group interview, I see his face. And then I learned about Ekinkar and these Ekmasters, which I had never heard of before. I was always interested in the Saint Germain and Metatron and you know all of that. But anyway, so I took the course and it was, you know, it was quite extensive. You know, there was there were three sessions. One was like learning about relation. It was like a review of everything that I had learned, but they wanted to make sure that I had the foundation to take the table work class. So what I have learned through multidimensional body balancing and spirit mending is that anything that we have in our physical body manifested somewhere out in the ethers first. So we have six bodies. We have the physical body and their inner bodies, <clears throat> but we always see them depicted outside of us like a rainbow getting wider and wider, but they're inner bodies. So I always found that fascinating. It's just something I come to recently. So you have a physical body, a super physical body, which is like right next to you. Then you have the astral body, which is your emotional body. And then you have the causal body, which is like your past lives, the Akashic records, all your cellular memories, things like that are housed in that body. Then there is the mental body, all your thoughts and things like that, your attitudes and all. And then the other mental body is the etheric body. And then you have your soul body. Mm -hmm. So they all look just like you, but they're more refined, you know, and we all have wounds and disconnects. When we were children, we fell down, you know, we got abused, whatever happened. And we can get into the fight, flight, or freeze mode, and it stays in our system somewhere. And you don't even know it's there. You don't even know it's running you, you know? Like, I'll to be honest, I'll just express that I was eight or nine, and I remember my dad kind of like kissed my neck and stuff. And I don't remember anything other than he was, I froze and I think I left my body. And I don't think he penetrated me and all that. I don't, I don't know. I've never known. I blocked it out. It's so interesting how we do that to survive. But that was a trauma that I had at eight or nine, but I didn't know it. I didn't remember it. And I, I tried to talk about it, but it didn't really, it didn't match anywhere. Like, oh no, we're fine. We're a good family, <laughs> whatever. Um, so when we have these traumas, then you protect yourself, right? You create like protection. Oh, I'm not going to engage with that relationship because I know what that person wants you know that person wants sex like I'm in high school or whatever just all based on that one experience right so when we have these traumas and disconnects and wounds I see it like graph paper like we have graph paper like a matrix all around us and it's like an energy blob and we're charged so that blob like attaches to the intersection of the graph paper or that matrix and it just kind of lodges there and stays there and what's happening is every cell, every body, every system, every tissue has soul. Mm -hmm. And that soul is stuck in the past. And it's kind of like an operating system that's running your reality, but it's in the background. So you kind of don't notice it too much. Mm -hmm. And then you come across someone that can help you learn what you may have going on in your bodies and in what system? 80% of the time, these energies get stuck in the past in our nervous system, endocrine system, and chakra system. And we're all one thing, I get that. And we all, you know, it's all one, but there are some delineations with frequency and vibrations and all of this. And so obviously like the, the nervous system runs us it's like our electromagnetic frequency well the magnetic would be the chakra but you know our nervous system send those impulses to the endocrine glands the thyroid the adrenals fight or flight you know run saber tooth tiger whatever and the endocrine systems connect to the chakra system so it's all one thing but 80 percent of the time that's where we hold our wounds and disconnects so what's so beautiful about this work is that you can say hey what do you want to work on and they say, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, I want to work on this. And you go, okay. And then you just call in, this is the most important thing, call in 100% pure divine light. And the reason I stress that is I had never 
I'd always assumed that 100% pure divine light would come in. But what happened when I had my first clearing was she called in, Vicki called in 100% pure divine light. And she called in my guides of 100% pure divine light. And she paused and she says, wait a minute. And it was kind of like Fred Flintstone feet. You know, I kind of heard this like moving. And she said, we have a changing of the guard. So I thought I was working with Saint Germain and all of these beings in the White Brotherhood, but I didn't call in specifically 100% pure divine light. So there was a changing of the guard and she did some clearings and um, you have commands and it's not me or Vicki or anyone else doing it. It's actually a co-creative session. So Lori, if we were working together, you would tell me physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, what you wanted to work on. I have this little Google form, you fill that out. And then I look at that. And then I, what I've done with all those classes that I took with um, Vicki and, and Jean, and I know the viewers probably can't see this, but I created a map. And it's basically a one page summary of anything it could be that someone wants to work on. And I've had it where people come to me and go, oh, I don't know, whatever spirit wants me to know or work on. It's like, really? So I created this map so that you tell me what you wanna work on. And then I connect to you and your guides of 100% pure divine light. I call in my guides of 100% pure divine light. And we ask for your highest and greatest good to be done for yourself and for all concerned. And it's kind of like a why. So like, there's you, there's me. And then together, spirit shows us what needs to be done in your highest and greatest good. And I asked to be shown. I, I just say that. I just asked, show me where to start first. And oftentimes, the stuff that we have mm -hmm. isn't even ours. Yeah. It's not ours. We inherited it through our DNA, through our subconscious patterning. And it gets unlocked and gets activated in our body through a traumatic experience or whatever. And that's when we're not our best self, right? Right. And then I just wait. I actually record every session and I share what I got. So we kind of throw up all the stuff you want to work on, all the stuff I discovered. And the way I discover it is by asking and using can I, uh, applied kinesiology, a yes mm -hmm. or a no, show me the truth. What does this, and, and I've double checked it with people that I work with and they go, yep, that's, that's what's going on. I'm like, okay. And then sometimes we don't even deal with your list or my list, the light comes in and starts sharing. I start sharing. It's my voice, but it's not me. And I, and I don't want to say that I'm a channeler because I'm not channeling a being, but it's kind of like, <laughs> and I'm being flippant and funny because I like to, but it's like your guides and my guides, we get together and we do lunch and we talk about it and we share what we hear and we see. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. somehow it works and I'm amazed by it. People feel better, they're clearer. And oftentimes what I witness is after we clear out, let me just say something about the dark. Hmm. 10 on a scale of one to 10, 10 is the light. Nine to one is the dark. And we could call them out. We could name them what they are, which I never even knew these names existed. Like arc, we have archangels. And we also have arc demons. I did not know this until I, took I didn't this know class. that either. Right? Yeah. Gargoyles and just weird stuff that we don't even want to give them attention. Right? Right. But the light always prevails. So we basically clear out the dark, the entities, the traumas the disconnects with violet light yeah we use violet light to consume it all and clean it up but you know how the universe likes a vacuum you want to fill it back up not with more trauma or whatever you fill it up with liquid golden light to heal and seal everything that we cleared out and then you anchor and hold it with divine protection and you know it's so simple that it's unbelievable at least it is to me, because right. like I said, the fish <laughs> in the water, really, yeah. this works. This is great. Let me be of service. Right. Yeah. So, and so, and so talk to me a little bit more about the vibe, like the frequency vibrations, right? One of the big things that right now that people are using, I know I use it every night on Spotify where they have like the chakra clearings that they use that vibrational music. What are your thoughts on that? 
I think that everything that we are and everything that we witness in this reality is light and sound. Mm -hmm. And I think that light is sound expressing itself. Mm -hmm. So everything's vibration, everything is a sound. And what is it? How do you pronounce it? Sophageo? Sophageo? You know, those tones? Yeah, of the, exactly. All of that is real. I mean, we respond, our cells respond to that. And yeah. if you, I remember a long time ago with, um, what was his name? Gary Young with Young Living, how yeah. he had a measurement of, of energy. Mm -hmm. And, a, you know, frankincense, really high vibe, a rose is really high frequency and vibration, but you hold a cup of coffee and it's like, well, it lowers your frequency. Um, I feel that if you are vibrating and you have the frequency and the energies are flowing and they're not blocked, say meridians or all of that, all of those energy rivers that we are, if everything is flowing and isn't blocked or has to move around a trauma or whatever with the flow of energy, like feng shui, it just flows. And if it's blocked or congested, then it makes sense that it's going to lower in frequency. I don't have a device to measure it, but I know that how I feel when I'm feeling happy and goofy and laughing and being with friends and in this loving space, I feel so much better. I mean, look at David Hawkins with his book, The Power of Force, Life and Four, whatever it was called. Yeah, you can measure 500 is love and above. What is it? 520 is joy. You know, it just, right. it, it can be measured. And um, we are frequency. And look at all, Dr. Is it Emoto when he did all the water studies, you know, of how it, the crystalline water looks. It looks beautiful and harmonic and flowing when you're, when you're focusing on love and we're whatever, 75, 90% water. So we have the power within ourselves. And that's the main thing is that we forget that we are God also. <laughs> we are made of the same essence and substance of that unified field that we all live in. And everything is relationship. So when you are in a harmonious relationship within your body, within your outer world, with your partner, with your work world, your environment, it, it matters. And yeah. you have the ability to go on the inner. That's the deal. Everything, I sound like Biden. Everything is on the inner. <laughs> Everything is on the inner. And when I said that's the deal, because I saw Saturday Night Live making fun of him for that. <laughs> anyway, um, everything's on the inner and we get distracted with this outer world. Yeah. We think this is real. It feels real. I'm going to share something very weird of an inner experience I had. And that's how I can speak to the truth of we are just light. Um, I had received some energy work and I was driving to work from Longmont to Boulder and I was going along the foothills that morning and I'm going up the hill and I'm driving my car and all of a sudden there was no sound and everything was blue, white light, that's it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay. And then I'll, this is the part that got me was like, my hands were still at 10 and two on the wheel and it was like a theater screen. Like when you go to the theater and you see that big screen in front of you, but nothing was moving. And then all of a sudden motion and sound came in and I could hear my, my tires and the car started moving again in my awareness. And I was like, whoa, it's really true. This is an illusion, but it looks so real. I can't explain why that happened. I asked a Vedic astrologer, a numerologist person, and he said, oh, well, we normally don't do that when you're driving your car, but he described it as samadhi. I don't know. I, I don't know. I admit that I don't know. This world, this life, this is a mystery, and I'm just putting one foot in front of the other. And I'm, I meditate every morning. I contemplate every morning. And what I have found is if you do ask, if you ask what's going on or give me some guidance. You get the answer. It's really true. And I'm you not the most be, patient in the world, but I, you, you get say it. That you have to be open to get that answer. Wouldn't you think that you'd have to be willing, at least willing? Yeah. And that's kind of open. But you have yeah. to be willing to receive what is in your highest and greatest good and what you really want to know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have to tell you that I believe in what you're doing, right? Like, so I've also um, 
you know, taken Reiki one and two. And I really, I believe in energy. I believe that it's a flow. And when you're blocking that flow, it's, you know, I, I was having this conversation the other day with my partner where I'm like, you know, if you block the flow, those are the days where you're just having a really bad day. Everything is going wrong because you're not in the state of flow. Yes. Would you agree that that's the truth, right? Like we are, when everything is going right and you're having one of those days and like the birds are chirping, right? It's like that hallelujah moment. It's yeah. like you're in the state of flow. And so many people fight that. And I love that you said like your environment needs to be in alignment with that. You can't, it's like trying to, you know, bang your head on the wall when you're just not in the right spot. You're not in the right relationship. You're not, you're not in alignment is the word that I like to use. And I love what you said. So is there something for, for people out there that haven't experienced that, that haven't gone and, and done any of the work? What is a, where is a good place to start outside of coming to find you? Cause we're going to, we're going to go ahead and, and make sure that people get your information, but what would be a really good first step? You know, brushing my teeth every day is what I do. And I think a very good step is to connect with yourself first thing in the day, mm -hmm. first thing in the morning, connect with yourself. There's many ways to do that. People like to walk in nature. I like to multitask and drink my coffee and my lemon warm water. Um, mm -hmm. while I meditate, I'm a multitasker. Um, and meditation is lovely, but I think what's even more powerful is contemplation. Mm. And that is like an inner divine dialogue with your higher self, with source, with creation, with God, whatever you want to call it. I call it the divine because that's pretty neutral. And so T tell me a little bit more about that, about contemplation for people who may not get that. So what does that look like? So um, uh, there's so many stories, but I, I want to <laughs> just make it simple. So you ask a question and then you wait uh -uh. to hear what the answer is. Now you can notice your inner chaotic mind. I have one. You know, it's like, ding, 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 ding. Oh, I got to go do this. I'm going to do that. I'm, I, I should do this, whatever. How am I going to do that? But if you ask a question that you earnestly really want to know the answer to, and I think that the divine and the guides of 100% true divine light are only going to share with you exactly what is in your highest and greatest good mm -hmm. for yourself and for all concerned, because <clears throat> I forget that I'm not in charge. I feel like I am. I feel like I can control and charge my, you know, I can take charge of my life, but sometimes it just doesn't work out what I think I want. And then, you know, it's a, like hindsight, you look backwards and you go, oh yeah, this was a better choice. And I know people have talked about that. I'm, I'm really, it's not about law of attraction and manifesting what you want. It's more about contemplating your essence. It's more of an invisible thing. Like innocence. For me, I like to contemplate innocence, peace, love, and you can just take a word. I would advise everyone to go to genekeys.com, G-E-N-E-K-E-Y-S.com, put in your birth date and your place of birth and the time and look at your holographic, hologenic profile. Mm -hmm. And in that you will discern what is your essence, what are your gifts and what are your shadows. I love that. And contemplating your gifts and your, your cities or your essence, mm -hmm. I think that's what it's about. And it's just about, and, and what happens is it, it's like it works you. When you take the energy of, let's say love, and you want to focus on love, and you just set your intention to be that, and allow whatever comes to you on the inner to be received and not resist it, just notice it. Sometimes yeah. you, I hear, so sometimes I hear a sentence, like I'll hear quatrains, I'll hear sentences, I'll hear one sentence over and over again. So I take my journal and I write it down. And then the next sentence comes and I write it down. I don't know. It's just something that happens for me. Um, and so four lines, quatrains, and they're usually divine musings and they're lovely. But when you focus and contemplate and bring yourself back, like through the breath or whatever, but you bring yourself back, let's say to contemplate love on the inner with your eyes closed, you could listen to music or just have silence. 
which is mm -hmm. very nice too. I usually use a nice little chant in the background, but you'll get messages, you'll get insights, you'll get ideas. And I want to say that if you follow what is true and light for you, your life will go so much better. It's that resistance that we do. Well, no, I want to do it my way. I want to go yeah. over here. I want to work there. Yeah, yeah, well, maybe it's not in your highest good. Who knows? Yeah. But if so you ask, I, you'll know. Yeah, so I had some, you know, what really got me in tune with this, um, and some people may have heard the story before, but I had an experience where I was working um, in Connecticut, where I had been at this position, God, probably 10 years or more. I had my retirement job set up. I had my little house on the beach. Like I was set. I thought I was good. And for some reason, I kept getting another position in Boston and they kept asking me to go. And I, I turned the job down. They'd come back. They'd offer it to me again. I turn it down. We went back and forth so many times to the point that I said, this is a world renowned institute, right? There's, they don't need me. Why are they coming for me? And I remember being like, okay, I don't know why you're sending me back there, but I'm just going to go. I'm going to do it. I'm going. I sold my house. I sold everything. I packed up. I moved from a 2,500 square foot home to a 500 square foot apartment in the middle of the city. And I'm like, I'm here. Now show me. And would you know it? A year later is when I got diagnosed and the universe or whatever you guys want to call it put me side by side with a world renowned breast oncologist that I needed to, I, I, all I needed to do was make one call and I had the best of the best. I had the chairman of the breast oncology world as my oncologist and they have saved my life. Yeah. And up until that point, you know, I kind of was like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. But now I don't question it anymore. Now I know like, when you get the signs, when they show you the path, don't question it, just take it. And yep. now that I live my life that way, right? It's, it's so much better. After, after that experience happened to me, I then moved to Nashville because my, the love of my life was living there. And I remember having this call with him saying, hey, look, I really want to go to Florida. I really want palm trees in my life. But if you want me to come to Nashville, I'll, I'll do that for you. I'll do that so we could, we could make this work and we could vacation to Florida. Do you know that two years after I moved there, we got hit by a massive tornado that we lost our home. And where, I, where did I end up? I'm Florida. in the middle of Florida now, right? So like, I don't question it anymore. I'm just like, okay, got it. And so like, if things don't, and this is what I want people to understand from what you're saying, because this is the essence of what I'm getting from you. So please correct me if this isn't right. Okay. But like everybody really struggles to make stuff happen in life. And it's a struggle. It's a fight. You have to jump through 20,000 hoops. And like, it is like so hard. Mm -hmm. And what I want people to hear is when it's that hard, yeah. that is not your direction let it go and what you're meant to do will show up is that do you believe that i totally believe that uh that's a trust walk that's yeah. hard i mean i worked in corporate america for 40 plus years and that's what i knew and that's what i thought i had to depend on and i on the inner i was told from longmont Colorado to hear that I would be moving to New Mexico. I'm like, okay, well, I don't know how that's going to happen, but I will actually assist what my intuition is telling me by looking for work here and moving here and all of that. And do you know that I did move here on my own by myself? I knew one person kind of, and I met the love of my life here. Oh. And it's better than I ever could have imagined. Right. Uh, I could not have created this, I, you know, I, it, yeah. And so Jim and I are just like Love kindred that. souls, like my soulmate. And he supports me in the work that I'm doing because he too is intuitive. Yeah. And it, it's, it's a trust walk. And it's been the hardest thing for me to let go is to, to let go of my own, I think I know what I'm doing thing yeah. and, and truly trust and, 
and see the results. And that's what happens in the energy work too. I think I know where we're going with this map and you're telling me what you want to work on, for example, but sometimes spirit just takes us in another direction and all those nitty gritty things that we think we need to clear and work on. In my experience with my own inner experience where I was having a day and I could not get normal. I was like, are we having a solar flares? What is going on? I don't feel good. <laughs> I'm just like, it was like insecurity on steroids. It was just this super consciousness thing. It was just really weird. And I did my map and I circled almost everything on there. I'm like, wow, I'm really messed up right now. What's going on? And I did transmosis healing on myself, which is also kind of weird with multidimensional, you know, working on yourself and saying it out loud. I've recorded, I haven't listened to it again, but long story short, the images that I was given. Mm -hmm. And I think when I say images, the holographic images, Mm -hmm. is actually creation like light is actually I might not it's like a dream you know, like I might not get what it's showing me but that experience in and of itself is what the healing is yeah and the light and the sound do the healing yeah I get to be the witness and the conduit a sacred conduit it's very sacred yeah. work yeah um and it's a, it's not, it's not a made up word, but spirit told me the word transmosis. And I'm like, what does this mean? And nobody could tell me. And I looked up trans, like transformation, transition, whatever. And I looked up osmosis, but there was no transmosis. And um, I was told by spirit that this means an unconscious transfer and assimilation of higher frequencies to raise the recipient's energy to the, to equal the source energy. That sounds kind of roundabout, but it's basically giving you exactly what you need in the exact right potency and timing in that moment. I love that. I love <laughs> that. And the other thing too that I want to add, because you mentioned it, um, is for those of you listening, like really when you get into this new realm, as you like to describe it, your ego is going to fight you the entire time, the entire way, because its job is to keep you where it's where you're at, right? And so you have to understand that your true self is always in battle with your ego. And you gotta recognize when you're living in your ego and when you're living in your true self. And part of why it's so amazing, it feels wonderful to be in your true self is because that's who you truly are. Your ego is always gonna fight for, I, I hate to use the word negativity, but it's always going to be to like, when you think about one upping somebody or you're not being your best self, or when you're going in the world of, you know, comparison, right. Or like, you're just always in kind of like in a fight mode is like how I like to describe it. Right. Like you want to just fight everybody. It's right. You know, it's that stress that you're creating in your life. And it's, it's really about not being your true self. So if you think that you can get yourself to a point where you can be your true self, you know, Tracy is the person that's going to get you there. And like Tracy, you, what you are up to in this world is so unique. It is. And like you are just, you embody what it is, you know, to be an intuitive. Like it comes so naturally to you that I am honored to be here with you today to hear what you have to say because of the fact that you really took on the challenge of like I'm going all in in life like I'm going all in regardless of what people are saying and for those of you listening right you have that own challenge when it comes to your care when it comes to your life when it comes to the people you are sharing yourself with what you're sharing in this world people are always going to challenge it. So if you hear, if you hear something over and over again, like I like to tell this to my coaches, I teach at a coaching school and I tell them like, look, people want to talk about what they keep repeating. If you hear a client say over and over and over again, a cer certain word is because it's their true self trying to come out and they want to express it, but they don't know how. So those of you listening, if you have something that keeps coming up for you, if there's a feeling, if there is a, even like a logo, a picture, a sign of a sound that keeps showing up, 
stop and acknowledge it and be receptive of the gift that is about to come your way. And that's exactly what Tracy is there to do for you. So if you want support, she's your girl. So Tracy, Aww. how can people find you? I have a website. It's my name, tracywittit.com, T-R-A-C-E-Y-W-H-I-T-T-E-T.com. And on there is kind of, I've tried to put into words this invisible work, but you know, it's like who, what, when, where, why of what is transmosis healing. And there's a schedule button if you ever want to schedule. And the other thing on there is a, um, I'm a co-author of a book called The Magi Within, Unlocking the Gifts of the Inner Self. Because my thing is all about the inner realm. And you're so right, Lori, about connecting and paying attention to what the outer world is showing us and to, and to acknowledge it and accept it and, and just try it, you know, just take a risk, try and see what it's saying. But what I like about the Magi Within is we, the two other authors and myself, we took the alphabet A through Z and created a book, a workbook for people to use. And this would be a great way to connect in the morning. Like think of a letter, what letter K? Oh, okay, kindness. Just be with kindness all day that day or contemplate kindness. And notice when you're not being kind to yourself and notice when you're not being kind to others, like rush hour traffic, you're late for work, whatever, <laughs> you know, just notice it and then forgive yourself and move on. But, but you can go to the website and you can download the PDF for free, or you can buy it on Amazon, whatever you want. It's just oh, there. I it's another that. intuitive tool. Yeah, I love that. I can't wait to read it. Thank you so Thank much. You. And thank you so much for your gift of being here with us today and just all the little golden nuggets that you gave us. Um, I know that you will definitely, you know, your message is loud and clear to so many of those listening. And folks, please reach out. She's the real deal. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Lori. Thank you all.